Hey guys, good morning. It's Sunday. We're here. We're worshiping and we're jumping into scripture. You know, we've been working through Jesus as a healer this summer already. We also are going to take a peek for the next few weeks as Jesus as teacher. Jesus, the son of God, the son of man. So he was fully God and he was fully man. As you're spending time reading the scripture. And guess what? He's reigning on the right hand side of God the Father right now in heaven as fully God and fully man as well. So it's not like he just was this. He is this. And so we're jumping in. We've seen Jesus. He has displayed his miraculous healing. Last week he healed the man who was born blind. And we saw that we get told, see the light, number one. Number two, be bold and proclaim Jesus. And number three, number three, confront sin with the gospel. This week, we're, we're kicking off, we're jumping in to Jesus as teacher and what that means to be a disciple of Jesus, what that means to be a disciple of Jesus. So if you have your Bible, go ahead, open up with me, Matthew chapter Five, Matthew chapter 5. We're going to be taking a peek at a different, um, a couple different teachings of Jesus in these couple chapters in Matthew. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. So Kimberly and I, our first date was um, in March, and it's going to show that I'm kind of old, right? March 2010. It was our very first date. We were juniors in college. And there's one major thing that I definitely remember that night. I remember the whole thing, but one of the big things was it was a full moon. It was a full moon. And so you could see this beautiful light. Like you could, the moon itself was this beautiful light, right? And it was just glowing, glowing. It was pitch black in places. Um, all across the countryside of Oconee County, outside of Athens. But the light as we were driving from the moon alone was just absolutely fascinating. It was beautiful. But the interesting part of the moon, when we, when we look at the moon, right, and we see this full moon and it's glowing, is it's not really for its own glory. And what I mean by that is this, the moon doesn't have light. It's just a rock. Rather, the moon reflects the sun's light. It reflects the sun's light. And yet, at the same time, the moon itself has a very purpose for its existence. Dealing with gravity and gravitational pull, dealing with providing light, that's just another thing in the evenings. The moon has a very specific purpose. As we jump in and as we get in here and as we go into the greatest sermon ever preached, which is by Jesus, it's called the Sermon on the Mount, we see three things for you and me. It says be salt and be light, number one. Number two, we get told this, worship for God's glory. Worship for God's glory. And number three, number three, we see in Matthew chapter seven that you and I as disciples, what discipleship really looks like is to live purposefully. So jump with me, Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Number one, be salt and be light. For you and me, salt, it's just like a seasoning, right? Like we just put it on stuff to make it taste a certain way. But as Jesus is, is proclaiming, 
right now to all these people around him, the disciples, everybody. Salt is valuable, so valuable to them in their time. It's preservation. It's all about preservation. What are they preserving? They're preserving meats, things like that. Without this salt, what does the meat do? It rots, and it's terrible, and it stinks, and it can't be eaten, and it has to be thrown away. And so if salt loses its purpose, if salt loses its reality, it cannot be used. It's valueless instead of being valuable. One of my favorite games as a kid was the Oregon Trail. Loved playing it, loved trying to get across streams and not die of dysentery uh, as a game. But you think of these times of the settlers who are going out west, going towards Oregon in the late 1700s, 1800s time window. And this is what they would be doing too. They would be preserving their meats with salt, preserving their meats with salt. For you and me, what we're seeing right here as we're told to be salt, man, as you're jumping into culture, as you're jumping into culture, man, are you trying, are you trying to be an influencer of culture and to preserve the truth and the reality of God, of Jesus that he died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the world? Or is your salt valueless and it's being trampled under the ground? He says also be light, be light. Think about this, just like the moon provides light Light over darkness. You and I, the world that we live in, the culture that we live in, everything. It's not a light-giving culture. It's not a light-giving world. Why? Because of sin. Sin. Man is fallen. Man is what we call totally depraved. Meaning this, we are with sin since we were in our mother's wombs. As Psalm 51 tells us. And so to be salt and be light means we're pushing into culture, we're pushing back the darkness, and we're preserving the reality of the kingdom of God. And so ask yourself, man, ask yourself some things. Do you love people well? Do you build intentional relationships with people? Do you build up the church? Man, when you're, when you're out in the community, when you're out just talking about life, when you're talking about Concord, when you're talking about Concord Student Ministry, do you build up the church from a very specific church to the reality of the whole church? Do you call out one another's sins lovingly? Man, hey, you shouldn't be saying that, man. Probably shouldn't do that probably shouldn't be looking at that. How can I help you not do that and hold you accountable? Things like that. Do you share the gospel? To be salt and be light, man, Jesus is calling us as his disciples right here, right now, to say this, man, culture is pressing in. Culture's not bad, but instead of just being outside of culture, man, we live in it. And we seek to transform it with the kingdom of God by proclaiming the gospel and being real and being intentional with people. He says, be salt, be light. Jump with me to Matthew chapter six. He says this, worship for God's glory. Verse one, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward with your father in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor, don't sound a trumpet before you 
as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be applauded by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that you may give in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So one of my favorite paintings of the Gospels is by this uh, English painter named John Millay. I, I love art. I love all kinds of art. I like everything from modern to very realistic, something called photorealism. It looks like a photograph, but it's painted. I love all kinds of art. So John Millay painted, and he was, he was decently controversial. I don't love all of his paintings, but one of my favorites is, uh, it's called The Pharisee and the Publican. And it comes from a story in Luke that I want us to read, Luke chapter 18. So jump with me. Luke 18, verse 9. Jesus is talking once again here, and he's telling a parable. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves. They trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee was standing and praying like this about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Greedy, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. The audacity. Think about that. The audacity of this dude to say that. Look at these pews right here. It's like the Pharisee sitting right here. Tax collector's right over there. And this man's right here sitting, thinking, and praying. Man, I, I thank God I'm not like that guy. Man. He goes on to say, I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. And then Jesus says this, verse 13, but the tax collector standing far off would not even raise his eyes to heaven. But he kept striking his chest and saying, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this one went down to his house justified rather than the other. Because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. In John Millay's painting, the Pharisees out in the middle of the temple just wanting to be seen. No humility, no grace, no mercy. It's all about him. And then over in the shadows, next to a pillar, hiding behind it, not wanting to be seen, is the publican, the tax collector. When we come, when we worship on a daily basis, when we worship on a daily basis, man, are we, as Matthew 6 is jumping in, are we trying to make a show of our righteousness? Meaning this, do we just want people to see us and say, man, look at how good that guy's doing. Look at how great he's got it. Look at, he's got it all going on. He's a great Christian. He knows what he's doing with his life. Or, or are we, in Matthew chapter 6, as Jesus is proclaiming here, but as we're giving to the poor, this notion of giving, this notion of worship, where Jesus says, don't even let your left hand know what your right's doing. And ultimately what he's saying is this, man, worship is not for you and your glory. Man, as we're digging in, worship's for the glory of God. It's for God's glory. On a daily basis, are we more like the Pharisee or are we more like the tax collector? Do our lives worship for the glory of God in a way that is humble, an understanding of who we are and our desperate need for him? Or are they more like the Pharisee who think they have it all going on? Jesus jumps back in Matthew chapter 7. You can flip over with me. So the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew 6, 5, 6, and 7. And I want us to take a peek at 
a little bit of all of it. Beginning in verse 19, Jesus, he says this. He says, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So you'll recognize them by their fruit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. So this is point number three, live purposefully. Live purposefully. Right now we're in COVID-19 and it's the middle of summer. It's been going on since March. And we've seen a spike recently in South Carolina, really across the U.S., primarily Southeast states. And it's times like these where we have a lack of community, a lack of time with people, where we're sitting here struggling and saying, specifically, this is what we're saying, we're sitting here struggling saying, that what is my purpose? What should I be doing? What should I be going out for and doing? And Jesus comes back and he tells this story right here. And it's honestly not a story to scare you. It's not a story for you to question your salvation. That's not the purpose of this. The reality of this is for us to take a peek and say, you know, the people in this story, they're just a lot like that Pharisee. Not so much in the fact that they're just audacious. but in the fact that they just want to use God for their purposes. The Pharisee was all about himself. These people were all about themselves. They didn't confess and really believe in, in Jesus. They didn't confess and believe in God. Instead, what they confessed and believed in was using his name to do things to make their name greater. As you see. They drove out demons in his name. They did miracles in his name. Right? They prophesied in his name. But at the same time, they just used his name to make their name greater. That's not a life lived purposefully. That's a life using God for one's own end. And Jesus says, no, live purposefully. Know your purpose and live it. And guess what our purpose is, man? Our purpose is to be faithful followers of Jesus that produce fruit. That produce fruit. Faithful followers of Jesus that produce fruit. It's not based on our works. It's not based on trying to do these things to make our name great or for, to make people think that, man, we're just this great Christian. Man, faithfully following him, it's not easy. And there's days where it's hard. But living a life of purpose, living purposefully for Jesus, it, it specifically looks like this. Do you know him greater every single day and do you make him known every single day? Living and worshiping for his glory by being the salt and the light of the earth, by digging in, by influencing culture, by caring about culture, caring about your friends around you specifically is what I'm talking about that they know Jesus, that they have a relationship with Jesus. Or, or ask yourself and just be real with yourself right now. 
Or would you say your life is more like the people Jesus is speaking of here? Or the Pharisee? Or those walking down the street? Just imagine it, trumpeting. Having people trumpet as they give to people. Making yourself more famous. Instead of making Jesus famous and known. And Jesus, he goes hard here. He, he says, at the end, I'm going to say I never knew you. Depart from me. That's not what we want to hear. Instead, you want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? If you have a relationship with Jesus, you're not going to use Jesus. You're not going to follow in the footsteps of the Pharisee who thinks he's greater. Instead, if you have a relationship with Jesus, you're going to sit there, you're going to be real, and you're going to love him for who he is, for what he's done for you, and for what he continues to do for you because you know you can't do it yourself. So jump in, man. This is what a disciple looks like on a real daily basis. Be salt, be light. Daily, worship for God's glory and live purposefully. Man, jump in. I'm praying for you guys this week. I'm here for you this week. If you need anything, reach out to me. Text me. Email me. Kimberly and I love you. We're thankful for you. And this is the weirdest summer ever. I get it. I'm with you. I don't love it. I want to see you guys. I want to be with you guys. So continue to pray for those fighting COVID-19, those working on creating vaccines, those working in our hospitals. We'll see you later. Peace.